Hello guys, today we'll be covering a 2007 drama film called Juno. The movie begins as a 16-year-old Juno enters a supermarket to buy a pregnancy test kit. This is her third time trying the pregnancy test, and just like the first two times, it also turns out to be positive. After confirming her situation, she calls her best friend Leah and informs her that she's pregnant with Polly Bleeker's baby. Leah doesn't believe her at first, but when she realizes that Juno is serious, she asks what she's going to do about it. Juno tells her that she'll choose to have an abortion without making a big deal about it. The next day, Juno visits Polly and informs him of the pregnancy. Polly is shocked, obviously, but he doesn't react and asks her to do what she thinks is right. However, he's relieved when Juno informs him that she intends to abort the child. After school, Juno calls the abortion clinic and requests an appointment for the abortion procedure. But the clinic staff asks her various questions about her sexual life, which she finds extremely uncomfortable. In the meantime, it's revealed that her mother abandoned her when she was a child, and now she lives with her father who's a veteran, and a stepmother who owns a nail salon. The following day, Juno visits the abortion facility, where she runs into a classmate who's holding a sign against abortions. After some conversation, while Juno enters the clinic, her classmate yells at her saying it's wrong to abort the baby as it already has a heartbeat and fingernails. Regardless, Juno goes inside and speaks with the receptionist, who makes her feel very uncomfortable. She's given a form to fill, and when she looks around, she sees many nervous women waiting for their turn. She doesn't like the atmosphere there and rushes out of the clinic. As she runs away, her classmate tells her that she's doing a noble act for which God will appreciate her. After that, Juno visits Leah's home and tells her that she was unable to do the abortion. She's now considering giving birth to the baby and placing the child for adoption. Leah states that her parents will become upset and probably refuse to care for her, but Juno says that she's prepared to take the risk. Following that, Juno and Leah look into the newspapers for any adoption-related ads. Juno refuses the majority of them, saying she wants a cool and educated family. However, one particular couple named Mark and Vanessa grabs her attention and she decides to proceed with them. Later that evening, Polly's lying in bed in his room looking at Juno's photo from the yearbook. Meanwhile, his mother summons him for dinner, which he refuses to eat. She then says that Juno had called earlier to ask why he wasn't running today. She then asks him not to hang out with Juno since she fears that Juno might have a negative influence on him. On the other hand, Juno calls a family gathering with Leah's support to inform her father and stepmother of the situation. Her parents keep speculating about what it might be and wonder if she's been expelled or taking drugs. Eventually, Juno gathers the courage to tell them she's pregnant. She says that she'll give the child up for adoption and has already found a couple who will also cover her medical costs. Naturally, her parents are shocked, but they also seem to be supportive of her. Her stepmother advises her to take good care of herself by taking the proper vitamins and food, while her father promises to accompany her to meet her adoptive couple. The next day, Juno and her father go to meet the adoption couple, Mark and Vanessa. The couple has also presented their attorney in the discussion to negotiate the adoption's terms and conditions. The attorney informs that the family is willing to have an open adoption, so Juno will occasionally be able to see her child's photos and receive updates. However, Juno rejects that idea and insists that she'd prefer a conventional adoption in which she would not be in contact with the child. Vanessa tells her that they'll pay for all of her medical expenses and that she's welcome to ask for any additional money. However, Juno responds that all she needs are loving parents to raise her child. Juno asks to use the restroom, and as she takes a little too long, Mark decides to check on her. She asks him whether his wife sent her to spy on her, but he replies that that's not the case. Then they quickly bond over their shared love of music and popular culture, while the people downstairs are sitting awkwardly. Moments later, they hear music upstairs, and Vanessa goes to find Mark and Juno playing guitar. She seems a bit disappointed and asks them to come downstairs because they still have a lot to discuss. While leaving, Vanessa requests that Juno keep updating her medical appointments and results. A few months later, Juno runs into Polly as she leaves the teacher's office. He invites her to go to the movies with him and his friends, but Juno declines, saying she has an ultrasound appointment. When Polly says he wants to go along, she responds that he should go to the movies and she'll drop by later. Later, she goes to the ultrasound appointment with Leah and her stepmother, where she's able to see the unborn child and hear its heartbeat. Upon seeing the baby, her stepmother experiences intense emotion, but Juno acts very casually. Later, she decides to go to the adoptive parents' house to tell them about it, and finds only Mark there. In any case, Juno enters and shows the ultrasound picture to him. She then looks around the house and discovers his collection of movies. After arguing about which horror film is the best, they end up watching a movie together. 
After a while, when Vanessa arrives, Juno excitedly shows her the ultrasound picture. Juno returns home late, and her stepmother asks where she's been. When Juno says she went to Mark's house and ended up watching a movie with him, her stepmother becomes visibly upset at her. She further tells her to keep her distance from married men, and that she shouldn't show up unannounced in other people's homes. But Juno becomes irritated by this and leaves the house to meet Polly. She arrives at Polly's house and says that she wants to hang out as they did in the past. She confides in him that she's begun to appear fat, but Polly assures her that she'll always be adorable and beautiful in his eyes. He offers to resume their relationship once this is over, but Juno says that he can date any pretty girls he wants, including one in particular called Katrina. But Polly brushes her off and states that he's never liked Katrina and has no plans to date her. In the next scene, Mark and Vanessa are seen painting a room for the baby. Although Vanessa is adamant about picking the perfect color, Mark doesn't seem to be overly thrilled about the process. Vanessa advises him to read the parenting book in greater detail, and then they decide to hang the first photo of the family on that wall. Later, while Leah and Juno are hanging out at the mall, she notices Vanessa playing cheerfully with a few kids. As they proceeded to leave, they run into Vanessa, and when she asks to touch her belly to feel the baby kicking, Juno gladly lets her. The baby initially stops kicking, but after Vanessa talks to it, the baby kicks again, causing Vanessa to become very emotional and happy. A few months later, Juno's drawing more attention at school, and in the meantime, she and Mark have become quite close and communicate frequently. When she finds out that Polly is going to the prom with Katrina, she goes to confront him furiously. Polly confirms it to be true and says she should not be angry with him because she was the one who broke his heart. When she asks him if it's because she didn't want to marry him, he replies that he doesn't want to marry her either because she would be the meanest wife ever. After some heated exchanges, Juno storms out and rushes to Mark's house. When Juno visits Mark at his home, he shows her the comic book featuring a pregnant superhero which reminds him of her. Then as they slowly dance and play music together, Mark unexpectedly lets her know that he's splitting up with Vanessa. This freaks Juno out as she becomes angry, pleading with him not to do this as she didn't want her child to grow up in a broken family. As Juno gets ready to leave while crying, Vanessa arrives at the house and asks what's wrong. Mark then explains to her that he still needs to work out a lot of things before becoming a father. Vanessa reassures him that he's just nervous and will soon come around, but Mark says that he's not sure about the entire situation. Juno leaves the house in frustration and breaks down in tears by the side of the road. After a while, she returns to their house and leaves Vanessa a note informing her that she's still available for adoption if she wants the child. In the following scene, Juno returns home to find her father sitting in the kitchen. She says she no longer believes in humanity and asks him whether a couple can remain together forever for something good. Her father responds that although it's difficult, the secret is to choose someone who'll accept you for who you are in any circumstance, high or low. After a heartfelt discussion with her father, she realizes that she's in love with Polly. The next morning, Juno stuffs Polly's mailbox with a ton of his favorite Tic Tacs, and Polly rushes towards her after seeing this. She then expresses her feelings to him and asks for a second chance in their relationship. Polly's delighted to hear that, and he also reciprocates her feelings by kissing her. A few days later, Juno experiences labor and is rushed to the hospital where she gives birth to a baby boy. She had purposefully kept the labor from Polly because of his important race. But Polly notices her absence from the audience and rushes to the hospital where he discovers Juno has given birth to their son. He comforts her as she cries her heart out while they both are lying on the bed. Then they decide not to see the baby because Juno says that the baby was always Vanessa's. In the meantime, Vanessa also arrives at the hospital and happily claims the newborn boy as a single adoptive mother. After bringing her new baby home, Vanessa frames Juno's note, which states that if she's still in, Juno is still in too. The movie ends in the summer with Juno and Polly enjoying a happy relationship while playing guitar and singing together.